Hi there, you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. It's me, Alana, and Jamie, my co-host. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. I said it wrong. I almost always say, how's it going, Jamie? And I decided to like change it up just a little and it felt it felt weird to me. So how's it going, Jamie? Let's do that. <laughs> you know, that would be a really interesting uh, study about you being a creature of habit, you know? Like oh, right. when you deviate just a little bit. <laughs> You, and so when I do interview episodes, I yeah. have to intentionally like change the words in my mm-hmm. head. Like, hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Praying Christian Women podcast. Right, or, right. Hey there, what's up? Right. You know? So <laughs> do you prefer to do the same? I don't even know. I don't ever pay attention to how you open us with our you know, episodes. I do know that I, I always say, how's it going, Jamie? I think everything else is a tiny bit different. Like it's not scripted, but the how's it going, Jamie? That's that's where I know. Like that's when I go from Alana, the you know stay-at-home mom, to Alana, the <laughs> podcaster. <laughs> It's like making the coffee before the work. It's like it really boom, is. You hit the ground running with that. That's right. I am not going to so, take that away from you by forcing you. you to change it. So, I, I'm doing well. I don't know how I normally respond. I'm going to go back and we should have a whole episode of just clips of that part of <laughs> that part. It's like a ten hour loop of me asking you how it's going. <laughs> yes. Well, and there's another thing. So. I always say, I say hi guys a lot, and I know you say that a lot. Some people have corrected me and said, you don't say hi guys, especially when you- We aren't guys. And, and, you know, uh, yeah, so it's interesting, but I always, you know, I use it for everyone, boys, girls, men, women, whatever. Hey guys, Yeah, it's a collective group. We're not from, well, you're kind of from the South, but so, I mean, we could try, we could try y'all, but that just doesn't sound right. Sometimes I do- get y'all I insert y'all into some of my stuff like Uh sometimes when I'm writing things to people like informal notes and stuff I'll sometimes Mm -hmm. say y'all like really miss y'all but I'm not true like south south Mm -hmm. Maryland was you know southern Maryland which makes me even more south than just south of the Mason Dixon oh okay you know I consider myself sort of southern yeah but you don't sound can you pull off a convincing southern accent or would you have to just pretend Oh, I'm not sure. You just have to ask me later. No, I I don't know. I don't know if I can or not. It depends on, and there, I can pick out, it's funny. I can pick out someone from Maryland by their accent though, even though Marylanders Maryland. don't really have an accent. Okay. Um, but you know, sometimes there, I don't necessarily have a Maryland accent, but mm-hmm. like but I can, can pick out it. some people like water instead of water. My mom would say water mm-hmm. instead of water. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of what some of the other things are, but yeah, I miss Maryland so much. Maryland is, Aww. you know, blue crabs are like our thing and Never they're heard blue, of it. Yeah. They're, they're blue crabs because they and look it's blue. not because they're cyanotic. They're not. <laughs> No, they are, they're blue before you cook them. And when you steam them, they turn red mm-hmm. and, um, but they're really good and they take a lot of effort. It's kind of like an art to shuck the crabs. Like you have to cut oh, them okay. and get the meat out just so. And it just occurred to me that my children would have no idea how to properly shuck a crab mm-hmm. at all. They wouldn't have and, any idea. And so now you realize that you've failed them as a parent and you feel horrible. And- I have at least failed them as a Marylander. <laughs> so, yeah, we need to get, whenever we have, we have not visited my family back there very often. We mm-hmm. went a few years back, but it, it's never in crab season because oh, it's only that's certain summer. Times. Okay. Yeah, summer's crab season and, and my husband's work is usually kind of crazy. So we do most of our travel yeah, yeah. over the winter. Right. Well, speaking of seafood... I have gotten up the courage to accompany my husband to the fish wheel a couple times. What? So for people oh, wait, who are what? not the fish wheel. I don't even know what that is. Oh my gosh. I was going to say, now for those of you who aren't in Alaska, let me tell you. What or those wheel of you is. that live in Anchorage who aren't real. <laughs> That's right. Alaska. It's not real Alaska. We're, okay. in, we're, we're city folk. So a fish wheel is, um, it's all made of wood and it's like picture a big water wheel, right? Okay. And it just turns in the river with the current, but it's got two baskets and it will pick up salmon and dump them into like a little holding area. Like it, it, it doesn't dump them on land. It like dumps them into this little holding area. And so what you do is like, you go check it in the morning, you go check it in the evening. And sometimes you can show up and like a dozen salmon are going to be like, they're ready for you. And then you just dip your net in and get them. So this is your family's 
personal fish wheel or this is like a community? No, it's system. like a shared community where you can sign up for certain days. We've done like four days over the past couple months. Um, and you just like, it, do you like just dip them out like with your net or is it well, like- I'm not going to go into those details. I'm not- <laughs> You're not <laughs> yes. quite- that I'm, I'm not there over yet. Your yes. phobia of fish. A, a net is involved, and then basically, like by this amazing magical process, they end up in my fridge and freezer. Which that part I love. I love eating salmon. <laughs> I have never in my life heard of a fish wheel, and I have lived here for okay. almost eight years. This is crazy. I had well, no idea. A, it's a native Alaskan design, and now they're um, they're yeah they're very very convenient. Um, but that I have gone neat. with my husband a couple of times. I've never, I've been able to stand on the bank and sometimes you show up and there's no fish in there, right? At least half mm -hmm. the time. But sometimes he'll say like, yeah, there's fish. And then I just know to like, you know, go on a little pacing route down the trail or something. I'm very it, proud. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I pushed myself a tiny, tiny bit too far. I decided to go down to the water's edge with him. Like I still wouldn't have had to see anything if I didn't want to, but it was that was a tiny bit too much for him, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. getting there. So any new listeners yet, yeah, this is, this is Alana's ongoing therapy session regarding her fear of fish. So we should do, should we just change the topic of this episode and we'll call it like, you know, praying through your phobias. <laughs> I think that's great. Do something totally off the cuff. Well, this is actually, the title of this really is Prayer Versus Procrastination. Are we procrastinating? We are not. actual topic? Because do you know what? Fellowship is so important. It's been like two weeks since I've talked to you. And it so has. It's been busy. I think since, for me personally, I, I have been schooling at home, my three kids, mm -hmm. and we're going to do another episode on praying for homeschool moms. But mm -hmm. I just have to say, Virtual school is not homeschool. It's totally different. Correct. I noticed totally your different. choice of words. You said yes. you were schooling at home. Yeah, because yeah. I have two kids that are technically homeschooled because mm -hmm. they are, you know, they're going through a homeschool charter. So, mm -hmm. and, but this year, even homeschooling is a little bit different on my mm -hmm. end because I didn't plan for it until the last minute. Right. And the school charter is so backed up. I think all of them are. And the homeschool, yeah. um, like when you do the virtual classes, some of these mm -hmm. like larger things, like I got a couple of the classes from some of these people and they're, they're backlogged and back ordered on a lot of the right. physical materials. Yeah. So it's been kind of a crazy startup, but one of my children is vir doing virtual for mm -hmm. English and she does Japanese immersion, which is also virtual right now because her teacher's doing Zoom sessions, but it's different. It's not the same mm -hmm. as this homeschool lifestyle. And in that episode, maybe yeah. we'll get into it more, but mm -hmm. I consider it definitely, um, you know, you got to look at it in a different way and I'm still learning how to look at it, but it's yeah. been a challenge and it's actually been kind of a like hit on my pride because mm -hmm. I went into it thinking, I've homeschooled before. I've learned a lot. Right, I know what's going on. Right. And it's very, yeah, I, I've had a challenge, but I had homeschooled one kid and was entertaining mm -hmm. two toddlers, which. Right. You know, it's was, different for sure. It's different now with three actual kids doing school. and Well, and you and I both have a child in high school. That's a totally different thing too. You know, like that's different than like being in third grade and making sure they can read and multiply and, you know, yes. it's, it's different the older they get. Um, for sure. Let's, yeah, let's put a pin in that for our, our episode on praying for homeschool families yeah. and things like that, because, yeah. you know, like I, I love chatting with you about homeschool and I want to hear, hear more about your, your yeah. day to day. I had some, I, so. I missed, um, I missed getting one of my sons enrolled. So like they're, they're all taking the same English and writing online course. Mm -hmm. And of course they're all in different levels of that. So it's like Monday is, you know, this grade, you know, it's, it's a tiny bit of juggling. And I thought yeah. I got pretty decently organized and I even had this like color coded calendar for us. And um, two of the kids, their lit class doesn't start until the end of September. And one of them through the same program started like the week before Labor Day. And so we totally oh. missed it. And I'm like, oh, you know, like I felt bad because that, that truly was on me. That's, you know, I should have seen that. But I was also kind of like, well, I just saw that all these others were starting later. So I had it in my head. Oh, I don't need to worry about that now. Right. Which seems logical. Yeah. So even, yeah, even if you've been homeschooling forever, even if you totally embrace the homeschooling lifestyle, yeah, 
things fall through cracks, you miss things, you feel guilty, but you know, what can you do? You can't go back and change, nope. <laughs> change the past. Persevere. But persevere. I don't know if, I don't know if that episode will have aired by the time this one will. We're kind of still scheduling things. So doing this time for yeah. So you can look back if you're listening to this and see if we've already aired our prayers for homeschool moms. Oh, that's um, going to be too confusing. Never mind. Just don't even <laughs> don't even listen to this one first and just be on the lookout. That's right. Although at the rate we're going, like the homeschool one is going to be like you know published on Christmas break or something. That's true. It could. All righty. Well, how about this? I want to dive into our topic, which yes. is prayer versus procrastination. And really mm-hmm. this question of, can prayer ever be an excuse for inactivity? Mm-hmm. Um, before that, we should open in prayer. But before that, it has been forever since we've done confessions. And yes. since I love putting you on the spot right here in front of everybody, what have you got for us? It's not really on the spot because yesterday was in our Praying Christian Women community on Facebook. It was Take mm-hmm. 10 Tuesday and ah. we were on our confession. Oh, okay. Uh, You're going to recycle our- a confession, aren't you? Is that allowed? I don't think it's recycling because most people <laughs> listening are not in our Praying Christian Women community. So I'm just uh, capitalizing right. on my um, fortune. On, on You're my- um my it's not multitasking. You're repurposing. Repurposing. I like it. I'm redeeming my confession. All right. Redeem your confession and maybe redeem the introduction to this very chatty episode. I know. Okay. So my confession, my biggest one is that we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago where I was talking about just, you know, having grace with people, being irritated with people on social mm-hmm. media that yeah. were being really divisive or really strong in their opinions, one side or the other of issues. I tend to kind of fall in the middle of a lot of them or mm-hmm. see both sides at least. Yeah. And, and you said something though, you're like, now just remember that a lot of times the things that bother us the most about others are the things we struggle with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I really have been thinking about that. And so in that issue, which I, I don't think is as much an issue these last couple of weeks, um, I did find that even though I felt like I was kind of seeing both sides of issues, I was being yeah. judgmental of the people right. that felt They're passionately it yeah. about issues. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. my confession for probably this week is that I have been seeing just some really negative attitudes in my kids mm-hmm. toward each other, mm-hmm. toward mm-hmm. school, kind of a laziness about school with mm-hmm. my daughter, especially, which is not new. I mean, she definitely has been the most resistant. She loves school when she gets into it, but she's not a morning person. Oh, she poor thing. can't fall asleep easily at night. So she's the one Aww. that's like chatting in her bed at night at like, you know, mm-hmm. 11 o'clock at night. She's still talking to her stuffed animals and, you know, so I, she, it's hard for her to get up in the morning and, mm-hmm. um, but so I saw these attitudes and I was thinking we went all of what my daughter calls Corona break without significant issues. We went all summer without Mm -hmm. like too many huge, like knockdown drag Mm -hmm. out kind of things. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, and I know that it's the stress of school, but Mm -hmm. I've been really getting on my kids for, you guys are treating each other so poorly. Your attitudes are so negative toward Mm -hmm. each other. And I realize that it's reflected from me because I have Mm -hmm. been stressed about, and I have been feeling inadequate and kind of like Mm -hmm. I've not done as good a job as I thought I was going to do at managing the schedule and getting everybody done. And I've just been feeling pulled Mm -hmm. in a bunch of different directions. Yeah. So they're reflecting my attitude. My attitude is trickling down to them. Mm -hmm. And even with my daughter, just with her kind of lazy attitude about school, Mm -hmm. I, I see in myself that I have been, uh, just not getting up as early. And you know, I, I pretty much usually get up with my husband really early, mm-hmm. like five or six. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I'll, after he's gone, I'll make him coffee. I'll get bed. the kids ready for skating. <laughs> I'll go back to bed uh-huh. for an hour. Yeah, I could easily be doing work and preparing for school. So I've, I've definitely not jumped in with both feet either with mm-hmm. planning as much. And so that's my confession. Yeah, yeah. The word lazy is such a strong, isn't it? And strong word. Yeah. That's that's a hard label. And Mm -hmm. especially when I'm labeling my daughter. So what should we call it? A reluctant attitude towards school. I like that. Mm -hmm. Um, A 
Yeah. Because maybe it truly is. She just, she's tired and, well, and, and that's a real tired. genuine, you know, thing. Yeah. Um, okay. So how about, let's see, I, I should be the one since I brought it up, I should have had something in the can for this. Um, I definitely have something that between you and me, I would love to dive a little deeper into. I don't know about on the air. So how about I will use very cryptic messaging and our listeners are welcome to read between the lines and you're welcome to bring it up the next time we talk off the air. Okay. But I have been, I've noticed, I feel like I'm doing better. So that's probably a praise report. Um, I feel like I'm on the upside of things, but I think for a decent Decent amount of the summer, I was really allowing a lot of resentment in a lot of different areas into my life, and it got a little bit out of control even. Like most of the time, if something like that happens, like I entertain it for a week or two, I recognize it, and then like, okay, that's not me. This time, like I really, looking back, I feel like I almost spent the entire summer living in somebody else's like soul. <laughs> and that was a very like resentful and anxious person. So that's probably mine. Yeah. No, I can oh, relate maybe. to that. I've, I've gone through some of that too over the summer. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I guess we should note since we are kind of doing a new batch, this is early September when we're talking to you guys, we hope that by the time this episode airs, that the world is at peace. And that things are, I always feel bad, like knowing that it might be a month before this comes out and like the way 2020 has been going, like who knows what's going to have happened between yeah, now and then. I know so. it, it could be good. It could be bad, but it's all, God is in it all. So God that's is the in good it all. thing. Was it Twyla Paris? Is that her song? God is in control. Do you remember that? I was kind of like this anthem-esque sort of song. I'll have to look that up. I do know Twyla Paris, and I'm, but I don't know. I might have the wrong singer. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm sure you're right. <laughs> Can I tell you something super cool before we talk about prayer and procrastination? Yes. Do you know the Christian rock band Striper? Oh, yeah. Okay. So um, my middle son loves classic rock. And he recently discovered Striper, which is equally cool because like quality, their sound is just as good as any of the mainstream like 80s rock bands. Um, but they're very, very like God glorifying in everything they write. Like mm -hmm. it's not just here's clean rock music that's not about, you know, drugs. It's like. I don't even know all of their songs. He could come and talk to you for an hour about it. But anyway, there's they released. One, there's one Go that's ahead. amazing that's like mm -hmm. about. I can't even remember, but it, it has to do with like crushing Satan. Mm -hmm, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. My father-in-law yeah. actually played it okay. for me. I love Striper. Anyway. Yeah. So they released a new album like within the past couple weeks. Oh, cool. And so my son and my husband, they joined, they were selling tickets to basically like a virtual, it wasn't quite a concert, but it was actually more intimate where like it was all on this Zoom hangout thing and all four members of the band were there and they would play some of their songs and then in between talk about them, answer listener questions. He had so much fun. It was so fun looking at how just... Um, um, enraptured my son was with the music and things like Aww. that so if anybody listening likes you know kind of that hard rock sound this is you know sort of not Twyla Paris <laughs> um, yeah it was really cool how they did that and I just love that they're you know offering something that my son just adores in terms of not only the musical quality but you know lyrically and things like that Right. I love that. And I just looked it up. I think the song is called To Hell with the Devil. It was from okay. 1986 that sounds, from an yeah, al yeah, that album of the same name. Okay. It was powerful if that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I think I've heard of that one. I don't recognize many of their songs. But yeah. Anyway, let's talk about prayer and procrastination. So guys, right. we planned this well in advance <laughs> that we would have this really long chatty introduction so that you guys could see, actually, no, I, I never really want to apologize for being chatty and having this back and forth because that's one of the things that I really, really love about meeting here with you. So, yeah, me too. but now I am excited to talk about our topic. So do you want to open us up in prayer and we'll dive in? Yeah, I'll do prayer and our verse of the day. Cool. All right, God, we just come before you thankful and excited to be here to record this episode and just to talk about prayer versus procrastination. God, we just ask that you would be present here, that you would guide our discussion, that you would help us just to bring out things that are going to really um, 
help us to deepen our prayer lives, that will be insightful, that will help our listeners to do the same. And um, we just give this time to you and just pray that you would be present and with us and glorified in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Our verse of the day is James 2, 14 to 26 from the NIV. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith? Oh, actually, I'm going to end with 19, 14 to 19. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. I've always loved this. Yeah. Kind of it's like, actually a good tie-in because the um, the Striper album I told you about, the new yeah. one is called something like Even the Devil Believes. <laughs> Whoa. That's so. always been just like a cut to the heart verse where it says, even the demons believe and shudder. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's not only that they believe, but they are, you know, they, they believe that it's truth. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. They know the Bible better than we do. Yeah. But, but this whole mm-hmm. idea of faith without works, I think it kind of parallels the prayer without works as well. Um, I know that, oh, you know, yeah. prayer, prayer can be a work. I think prayer is the greater work, right? That's yep. someone's quote. But I also believe that we can get so overly spiritual and overly focused that we do procrastinate doing work. Um, So I don't know. We we need to get into that. I don't know. Yeah, Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Maybe maybe you and I are going to need to pick sides and defend our position. I can't pick a side because I think there are times. (laughs) Remember, I'm right in the middle of every issue. I am. I always am too. There's a quote. I think it's Mary Shelley. It's summed up so perfectly how I feel about so many issues. And basically, she says something to the effect of like, I am so good at being able to understand every side of every argument that I will never have an opinion on anything, mm-hmm. <laughs> which, yeah. you know, isn't quite us, but I think we both kind of fall on that. But, you know, so let's, let's look at this maybe as a spectrum and see where you and I both fall on the spectrum. Cause like, so on the one hand, let's go super extreme with like, let's say, and this is not what the verse says, but let's say prayer without works means nothing, right? So let's say you've got a prayer burden for homeless people. And if you just pray for them, and don't do, you don't lift a finger ever in your life that your prayers have done absolutely no good. Um, and then here's the total other extreme where I think you just said the quote, like prayer is the real work and um, prayer is never a last resort. And then maybe in the middle is kind of this idea of, well, you know, if you're, if you're going to be so burdened to pray for it, then almost certainly God's going to prompt you to act on it as well, right? I'd say those are kind of the sides of the spectrum. Yeah. One is prayer is a waste of time. Let's get to the real work. And the other Mm -hmm. is work is work is a waste waste of of time. (laughs) Work is a waste of time because you should be praying. Yeah. Yeah. So let's think about, um, I forget if they were the, like the specific apostles. I think it was like the apostles with a capital A, how they decided that their time was Mm. not they were not supposed to waste their days. And, you know, I think the word waste is an okay one to use here by serving the hungry. And so that's why they appointed other people to serve the hungry and they devoted themselves to prayer and the study of God's word. So in that case, I think we have at least an inkling of where they fell on, but they also, they didn't ignore the hungry. They made sure that the hungry were provided for but they also recognize that their time and their calling was to prayer. Yeah. I was trying to look up the verse and I can't find it, but um, that passage, but yeah, they were, they realized that they had been given this spiritual stewardship Mm -hmm. of the flock and Mm -hmm. their primary goal. And I think it kind of, okay. So, so we could go several different directions. One of them was, There are many members of the body and Mm -hmm. as the spiritual stewards, they knew that that God was giving them this spiritual authority over the body 
that he was also giving them revelations about how to lead the body mm -hmm. and likewise giving them probably guidance on how to fight the spiritual battles for mm -hmm. those under their care. Mm -hmm. And so they thought, you know, not everyone can do this. This is something that we can do, that we are called to do. And that is our mm -hmm. primary calling right now is the spiritual and physical act of prayer. Mm -hmm. Whereas mm -hmm. these other things are good things too. And God has equipped these other people within the body to be really good at this. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're really good at setting tables and they're really good at, at serving. They're really good at mm -hmm. encouraging and they can't do what we, the apostles are doing. So it's, you know, in that particular case, you could look at it as, okay, there's, there's a time and a calling for everyone. Okay. That's one, I can see that one side sure. of the coin. And I think it's important to remember that even the people like Stephen who were appointed to do the serving, it certainly didn't mean that they didn't pray. Exactly. Because right? um, that could be a scapegoat, I think. You could kind of, mm -hmm. well, I'm serving. You're better at right. prayer. I don't have to. Right. It's like the people who like they volunteer at their church, so they feel like they shouldn't have to also tithe to their church, right? And it does. Yeah. it's not really an either or. It's a both and. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. No, I totally get that. So here's a question that's slightly tangential, but I think important to dive into. And I would love your opinion. Is prayer a spiritual gift? Because it's never listed in the list of spiritual gifts, but that, you know, most people or a large number of people don't believe that the list is exhaustive, right? Since different churches got different lists. Mm -hmm. So is prayer a spiritual gift? Because I feel like if it is, that has implications to this discussion. So my like off the cuff thought without actually mm -hmm. going deep into it. Cause I have thought about it before mm -hmm. is that first of all, Jesus said, when you pray, this is how you pray. So mm -hmm. everybody needs to pray. There's that foundation of exactly. nobody's exempt. Right. Like even though we know evangelism is a spiritual gift, that doesn't right. mean that if you don't have that gift, you are off the hook and never have to share the gospel. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that prayer can be, a manifestation of other gifts in some ways. Like I think mm -hmm. the gift of discernment can only yeah. come from the Holy Spirit. And I think mm -hmm. that some people, I don't think that that discernment is always just, you're just sitting there and you just are able to necessarily, I mean, sometimes you can, but, but mm -hmm. I think that gift of discernment can come from sitting down with someone. I've been with people before where I will sit down with them and they will pray over me and mm -hmm. they will know things right. about me. Mm -hmm. Right. And that, that is a them. discernment. Mm -hmm. I feel like that might be a type of discernment. Mm -hmm. And then they can use that gift of discernment to implement the gift of prayer. I that think makes sense. prophecy is the same thing. The gift of prophecy and exhortation over the church. Um, you know, I'm not thinking prophecy necessarily like Jeremiah and mm -hmm. Isaiah. Mm -hmm. but Right, right. But, well, I guess it is kind of like that. But just the gift of... Um, having receiving a word from god mm -hmm. to give to someone else because right. where do we receive that word it's in times of meditating on scripture yeah. or prayer that makes sense or the gift of faith right like i oh, think yeah. a lot of when the uh, gift of faith is being explained like people mm -hmm. point to george Mueller, you know like he was so yes. convinced that what he asked for in prayer he would get okay so now that we've kind of I think maybe we're in agreement that yes, prayer can be a spiritual gift or at the very least different spiritual gifts can make people pray differently. And maybe like someone with the gift of faith might be more even effective in praying for certain things. Um, but we also agree that that doesn't mean that, you know, the only people who are called to lives of deep prayer are people who have that gift. So now that we've got covered that common ground, <laughs> can we pause for just a second? I need to run and check something out and I'll be back in like half a minute. Yes. Okay. One other question I have though, is we're talking about, is it a spiritual gift? And, you know, I wonder if like, if you're a person and your desire is to become a more effective prayer, um, I just wonder, like the Bible says, don't seek the lesser spiritual gifts. Don't just speak, don't seek speaking in tongues. Because, you know, what does speaking in tongues do that, that builds you up? But seek the gifts like prophecy because that builds up the church. I think Paul says that to one mm -hmm. of the churches. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder if 
that's if it's something we can ask for, like God, help me to become better at praying and we can practice prayer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, I would hate to be discouraging to someone who would be listening and thinking, oh, well, prayer is hard for me. Maybe I just don't have the gift of prophecy or discernment. Right. And I just think if, if God has placed in you a desire to pray and mm -hmm. you're fighting through and it's hard, mm -hmm. I don't think that's a reason to think that you don't have the gift of prayer or the gift yes. of prophecy or discernment or whatever, mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. you want to look at it. Um, because I do believe that prayer is, and we do, you know, we've talked about how prayer, we do need to exercise our prayer muscles Absolutely. to become more attuned to God's voice, to become, yes. you know, but maybe God doesn't give that desire to everyone. I'd like to think that maybe anyone listening to this has an interest in prayer because we are the Praying Christian Women podcast. And, you know, so probably just about everyone listening at least has an interest in prayer, maybe a desire mm -hmm. to deepen their prayer life. So, I mean, what would you say about, you know, to someone who doesn't feel like it comes easily or like they are yeah. that person that people come to that they just exactly. know exactly what to say and pray. Right. So I feel like this really ties into like the non-spiritual comment, uh, um, concept of a fixed mindset or a growth mindset, you know, right. under a fixed mindset, you just assume that the talents you've got are what you're stuck with for the rest of your life. And there's mm -hmm. no desire to improve. And if things are hard for you, you're not going to it's just going to reinforce your idea that you're never going to get better. Whereas the growth mindset is totally different. It's, I am going to always be striving to be better at this. So like, for example, Michael Phelps is always going to be a better swimmer, even like as a six year old before he jumped in the pool for the first time. I have no idea when he started. He had the constitutional and genetic makeup to be a better swimmer than I'm going to guess anybody listening to this show. Right. But that certainly doesn't mean he never worked hard. It was the exact opposite. Right. So if you go into it with this idea of if I have to work hard at something, it means I'm not gifted in it. Then mm -hmm. like you're, you're so backwards, right? He's worked harder than any of us has. Um, and that combined now, if, if I started to follow his training regimen and worked as hard as he did, I would never be that good of a swimmer. And I probably would lose interest. Like you said, I think some of it does come down to desire and things, but honestly, when it comes to something that is such a universal thing as prayer, I don't really think that that the idea of desire really plays into, it. I think if you do not have the desire to really go deeper in your prayer life, I don't think that that means that you just weren't meant to be a better prayer than you already are. You know, I think mm -hmm. that at that point, a great prayer is God help me to want to connect with you more, you know, yeah. and that's always a great place to at least start. Um, so that's kind of what I feel about that. If you've gotten the gift of prayer, it's assuming that there is a actual spiritual gift of prayer, which, you know, we haven't quite come to a, you know, definitive answer on anyway, but if, if you are gifted in prayer with a little G, not even talking about, you know, spiritual gifts necessarily, that certainly doesn't mean it's going to be easy for you. Um, it's going to mean that you are going to have a passion to improve, you know, just like Michael Phelps had the passion to keep on working, keep on getting better and better until he's, you know, the best swimmer in the entire globe today. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I see it. Um, I think, oh, go ahead. No, no I, I sort of lost my train of thought, so I would love for you to jump in. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that I think to also be careful with every, with every, yes, this is okay, this is right, there's always a pitfall. And I think a pitfall could be if you are frustrated because you have tried to be, you, you, there's something that, someone that you have in mind that you want to be like, and they're this mm. certain kind of prayer they have this certain way with people and you think, I want to be like that. And you have worked and worked mm -hmm. and worked and you're not that person. Right. You're not that person. And that's okay. Yes. And absolutely. So I think there's a time to have mentors, to have goals of people that you admire and want to be like mm -hmm. them because God mm -hmm. can put those people in our lives to help cultivate our um, character and our right. spirituality. But I'll give you an example in practical life. Um, one of my very dear friends from Arizona um, is, uh, she was actually on the show, um, Christy Olaf. She's our mm -hmm. pastor's wife from Arizona. Mm -hmm. And she is incredible at organizing her home. 
at mm-hmm. maintaining systems. She's like one of those people where she had four, at one point she had four biological kids and four foster kids and mm-hmm. adopted kids in the house. And it was like, you could show up any time of day and, and everything mm-hmm. was perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, she actually came and helped me develop systems for organizing my house and like mm-hmm. spent a lot of time like helping me develop these systems. And I want to be like her. Like I want to mm-hmm. be her. I want to be this organized, like incredibly able to, to mm-hmm. pull this off stuff. Okay. Yep. I'm not her. Yeah. And she gave me so much information and so many tools that I use today. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, my home is never going to be just like hers. And it's right. never going to be, and I don't know exactly why that is. And I fought for a long time and I still sometimes mm-hmm. fight with that desire. Mm-hmm. I'm like a perfectionist on the inside and a hot mess on the outside sometimes. I love that. <laughs> and, um, it's, and, and I'm at war with myself sometimes. Yeah, but I can what, see. Yeah. But what I've come to realize though is I am not her. Yep. Um, my gifts are different. And there are yes. some things that she told me, hey, I struggle in this area that I don't. And yeah, so, in, in, yeah, so I feel like the, the danger is having these people that you hold up as mm-hmm. examples of who you want to be. Yeah. And being frustrated when you're not exactly like them. And, and on the other hand, you don't want to not glean what you can from them because it can build you up, but make sure that you don't lose sight of that. And if you are really, you know, good at something else, and maybe it is more of a practical thing like service or hospitality, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as long as you're not ignoring your prayer life, you don't have Mm -hmm. to look exactly like someone else. I don't know if that's just the other No, that is, I love that. Yeah. You are you are on a soapbox that I have been meaning to step up to for a long time. And you and I actually talked about this. Like I I would love to do an entire book on this concept because we're not meant to pray like Sally next door or yes. your pastor's wife from Virginia or wherever this lady was. Like you're meant to pray like you. And so I think a really great place to start like, let's go back to our spiritual gifts. Like we just had this great conversation of how your different spiritual gifts are going to impact your prayer life differently. So let's say you've got the spiritual gift, like we said, of discernment, your prayer life can become way more intuitive, way more about listening, right? That's what you are meant to pray. Like if you're, um, let's say your spiritual gift is something that's totally, doesn't feel like prayer at all, like administration, right? You know what you can do? Like if you're the kind of person who is so good at like organizing and making sure the paper clips go here and the staples go here and the pen caps go here and nothing gets lost, then you're going to be really good at praying from these very detailed organized lists mm-hmm. to make sure like I think about um, the, the, the perfect church secretary who can keep track of every single thing going on in the church. Okay, now mm-hmm. extrapolate that to keeping prayer tabs on every single thing going on, right? You have like, my brain is, is not very organized in that very detail-oriented way. Like I've got decent systems for managing my time, but in terms of like keeping track of a hundred different details, that's not my thing. So my prayers are, are much more like big idea prayers, right? But if you're a detail person, you're going to be able to pray for the details or, you know, let's say that your prayer, I'm sorry, your spiritual gift is hospitality. You are going to be able to pray over your home like nobody else, right? Because that's what you love. You love this sense of inviting people into your home. You're probably going to be great at praying for your friends because they are always on the forefront of your mind if you've got the gift of hospitality. So I feel like once you know, like the more you know about yourself, so let's just start with spiritual gifts the better you're going to learn to pray in the way that God made you to pray, right? You're not ever going to pray the way I pray. I'm not ever going to pray the way Jamie prays. Um, And yeah, like it's, it really does turn into the foot doesn't say to the hand, you know, why, why aren't, why don't people like me as much as they like you? Or, you know, why can't I like in every conversation like Jamie does, why don't I have this gift of always asking to pray for them right there? Well, that, because that's not me. Right. Um, and so learning to pray according to your giftedness is going to have such a tremendous impact on helping you let go of, of guilt and feeling like you should be praying in a different way. Yeah. And I think our episodes, I just looked up the ones on learning style and motivational tendencies. If you go to episodes 76 and 79, 
Yeah. 76 and 79, it's prayer, like how our learning style, how our motivational style mm-hmm. affect our prayers. Um, yeah. You can also add in there how our spiritual gifting, our mm-hmm. personality, you know, all these things, yes. how they impact. And we actually talked about doing like a Myers-Briggs we analysis, did. right? I know, I, I know. Great. And I've, I've, I've started a book. I'm not sure that I'm going to finish it anytime soon, but because this is so important to me, like you were not meant to pray like anybody else. Mm-hmm. And the sooner you can recognize that and the sooner you realize, you know what, you don't have to be the person who stands up in church and has the most flowery prayer. Like for any of you who are familiar with my novels, not all of us are supposed to be a grandma Lucy. Right. Right. Some of us are supposed to be the the quiet little person in the background who maybe never prays for more than like two or three minutes at a time, but is constantly like anytime they see somebody, they're praying. You know, they say a quick popcorn prayer for them. Like we need every single type of prayer in this world. And so we really do ourselves and other people an amazing disservice when we try to pray against who we are. Amen. 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 I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we haven't really talked a ton about procrastination, but we've talked about a ton of other great things. Well, no, I think that's good. And I think this is one side of the coin. Okay. So prayer is definitely a great work. Okay. But at what point could you flag that you're procrastinating Mm -hmm. doing works? Because we've talked a lot about how important prayer is how yeah. not to be discouraged, but also not to be discouraged in doing works. But how right. could someone on the other side of the coin that might be using prayer to procrastinate works look, the what would that time, look like? Yeah. Like, can, the only time I could see this actually happening, it would be something like this. If you feel absolutely called to do something like Jamie, God is calling you to join the board of directors at the pregnancy center. Mm -hmm. And you're so resistant that you just say, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to commit to pray for them every day. That's the only time that I feel it. If it starts with the calling and your response is, well, I'm not going to do that, but I'll pray. Then that probably is an excuse. But I, I, I don't feel like I could ever stand here and say that there is a time that you need to get off your knees and do something if you feel led toward the prayer side. I think one other thing though, along those same lines is if you feel called to do something and you decide, I'm going to pray about it more. I'm just going to pray about it more. Oh, true. I'm going to keep praying about it. I don't know. Maybe God is calling me, but it's like, Mm -hmm. I'm going to hear until there's a literal neon sign dropping down because this is my hang up. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I want to see the neon sign. I want 70 confirmations. And even when I get like, you know, 70 confirmations, my two doubts or my, yes. you know, usually mm-hmm. went out and, you know, I, I might be exaggerating a little, but yeah. So I think there yes. might be a time to step out in faith. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. job right now, just because mm-hmm. you had an inkling for a second that God said to, to quit it. But, um, you know, I think think you're totally right. I'm glad you brought that up. And I'm actually, I'm going to go in here and make an executive decision. (laughs) I'm changing the title to not be about procrastination, but prayer is an excuse for inactivity. Because I think there is a slight difference. Yeah. Procrastination is a slightly different than just inactivity. And I I think you're absolutely right. I think that if... um, you get so indecisive and your excuse is I'm just going to pray about it more, but really that just means that you're pushing off the decision making. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. There, there definitely is a time where some, you know, Peter didn't say, Lord, if you want me to step out of this boat, you know, please show me. He just says, you know, all right, call me. And once God, or once Jesus calls him, he doesn't say, okay, can you call me again? And mm-hmm. then Jesus calls him again. And he says, okay, can you show me again? I think I'm going to sit here and pray about it. Like there is a time to truly step out in faith on things, but I'm going to wager a guess that the, the more common fault is stepping out. I, I would say that the more common fault is 
activity as an excuse to not pray. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think both I are things that. that we need to be, to be careful about. Like I would never encourage anybody like to begin a ministry or to dive into like intense counseling with somebody or intense discipleship with somebody without, you know, taking the time to go into that very prayerfully. And mm-hmm. I, I would wager that that's a more common mistake that people make is to just assume that when an opportunity presents itself, that they're meant to dive in. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of it, again, goes back to knowing yourself. Are you more prone toward using prayer as an excuse for inactivity? Or are you more prone to using activity as an excuse for prayerlessness? Mm -hmm. And just be aware of which which kind of side you fall on to make allowances. So if you're the kind of person who really does just sit on your haunches and just say, I'm going to pray about it, I'm going to pray about it. Sometimes I think it's important for you to say, you know what? God, I, I've prayed. I don't know exactly what you want. I'm going to take this step. Please redirect my step if you need to, but otherwise here we go. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas if you're the opposite, you probably do need to say, you know, I'm not going to take a step forward until I have really gotten that neon green light from the Lord. And I think that the more, again, it goes back to the more, you know, about yourself, the the easier you're going to have deciding if it's, um, like which, which side of the spectrum you need to work your way more towards, right? Because I guess mm-hmm. the ideal is kind of like that passage in James, prayer and action, faith and deeds, right? And so yeah. whichever side you fall on. But I, don't, I, I just feel so, I feel so bad about this idea that anybody like with a prayer burden, like God's up there wagging his finger saying, will you get off of your knees and do something about this now? Like, I feel like if it's a true prayer burden, like prayer really is where the work starts. Well, and I think, I think of two things. So the, the one thing that that leads me right into is this idea that there are probably women listening who are homebound, whether because of COVID Mm -hmm. or because Mm -hmm. of physical infirmity, Mm -hmm. um, that might feel worthless because Mm -hmm. they're not taking action. They're not serving in Sunday Mm -hmm. school. They're not, uh, going out and feeding the homeless or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And mm-hmm. the reminder is that prayer is the real work. Don't be yes. discouraged because, um, so I was listening to an interview with Pam Tebow, Tim Tebow's mom. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about how her mother was a Christian, but it wasn't until she was, when she was in her seventies or maybe it was her 70th birthday. I think mm-hmm. he was just telling her and her, um, telling Pam and the granddaughters that she felt kind of like she was not very useful because she wasn't able to get mm-hmm. out. She was I think, mm-hmm. in a retirement home at the time. I might be getting, yeah. out. I think she was either in a retirement home or she might've actually been just part of a couple of social groups. Mm-hmm. But she felt like I'm not really doing anything really with my faith mm-hmm. and her granddaughters, Pam's daughters encouraged her to, um, start praying for these women. Um, and Mm -hmm. she started praying for the women. She actually started asking the women, Hey, how can I pray for you? Uh, One of the groups that she was in was a secular group. It wasn't even, I mean, like maybe the mm -hmm. garden club or something. I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. And they actually started in their secular group having a time of prayer requests and she went down and she was like the prayer curator for their group. Aww. And these women then started sharing how God had answered their prayers at Aww. the end of this meeting. Yeah. She had this whole ministry. She also started writing mm-hmm. cards for people from her home. Uh, we have a, an elderly woman in our life who that is her gift. Yeah. She remembers every birthday, every anniversary. We, we just get a card with a Bible verse and we know that that's covered in prayer. Yeah. So anyway, that's just, you know, there Aww, are some things. I love that. There's also a woman on Etsy and she, when my stepmother was going through chemotherapy, Mm -hmm. I ordered a prayer shawl and it was Mm -hmm. a shawl that I, it just looked like her. It looked like something she would Uh like. It was like a warm blanket for her to take Mm -hmm. into chemo with her. Mm -hmm. But this woman said that she prayed over it before Mm -hmm. she, you know, as she was crocheting this shawl, she would Mm -hmm. like basically literally weaving prayer into I love that. The shop. So anyway, just there's so many, um, there are ways that you can pray and not to feel like if it's not accompanied mm-hmm. by action, that your prayers mm-hmm. aren't effective. That's so important. 
For sure. I think it's Hudson Taylor, one of the, you know, kind of founders of the modern mission movement. I believe it was him and he had a sister who was bedridden and so much of her life's mission was to just pray and support his ministry. Mm -hmm. And that is so, so important. I think we talked about it in our episode on prayer and movies, but it's been forever. And the movie version of Prince Caspian, I loved this picture where Lucy leaves the main battle. Like she, it, as it almost looks like she abandons her friends. Mm -hmm. They know what she's doing, but really she leaves the battle in order to go get Aslan because they know that until Aslan shows up, they have There's no, there is no hope. Right. And so should if should she have i'm sorry you can i'm sure it's just allergies but i keep feeling looking at your video like you're about to cry <laughs> no it's funny my eyes are like glistening when i look at it's oh, like no. i'm not crying i'm okay. actually i do have a little bit of an allergy thing i think maybe anyway yeah anyway anyway i'm not crying so, good i'm so glad <laughs> <laughs> lucy just gets you so choked up lucy gets me every time <laughs> Actually, she's really adorable. She but anyway, so her. she goes and gets Aslan. And I see that as such an important picture. Like, let's take Hudson Taylor and his sister. Hudson Taylor is the guy who gets the credit, right? Hudson Taylor's the name we know. But had it not been for his sister mm. interceding on his behalf, I'm convinced that he wouldn't have had the impact that he did. And so, like, I'm going to go ahead and say that she had the greater work. He was, he was mm -hmm. out front. And so he kind of, he got the brunt of it spiritually and in every other way, but it was like the victory was won because of the people who were praying for him behind the scenes. Um, and so like when you, when you look at it that way, again, it, it kind of feels so silly to feel guilty that you're praying and not doing <laughs> Yeah. Well, I have this picture in my mind of like this great battle going on and this person mm -hmm. carrying something important to someone else, right? Like maybe they need mm -hmm. to get the whatever. gauntlet and end game. Okay. There, there go. you go. There you go. Thank you. We had to pull Marvel in at some point. That's right. <laughs> so who has the greater work? The one carrying the gauntlet mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. the one fighting off all the exactly. people that would overtake yes. and yeah so yeah. that's that's if the picture. If we knew enough about football I'm sure we could do it in football terms with quarterbacks and that's oh, about so right. That all I know and linemen but I don't know um but without without the people defending him he can't do anything. Yeah, that's totally true. Mm -hmm. I love that. Awesome. Yeah. Well, one anything else? Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's one last thing. When you were talking about changing the name from, you know, to how prayer mm -hmm. can be an excuse for inaction. The one other thing I think about, we've both talked about this, how there are times when we're praying for someone's salvation that we would rather sit back and pray for them than share the gospel with them. Mm -hmm. And I think there are times when prayer is the right thing. I have mm -hmm. been on both sides. I have forced yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I have forced evangelism and probably turned people off mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. words. And my, not that Jesus says that, you know, there are those that are not going to respond. But I do think mm -hmm. there's a time and a place. I think mm -hmm. evangelism even should be done with lots of prayer and, and yes. requests yeah. for wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I think there, for me, my, I tend to err on the side of, oh, I'll pray for that salvation for, you know, till mm -hmm. kingdom come, but don't yeah. make confront that person with the truth of the gospel because I don't want them not mm -hmm. to like me. I don't want them to feel judged by me. I don't want right. them to feel, you know, like I think they're inferior when, which mm -hmm. I don't, you know, so I tend to err on the side of using, if you're, if you have a burden to pray for someone's salvation, just open your eyes and your mind to the possibility if you tend to be like me and, and procrastinate mm -hmm. in that way, maybe God is also calling you to share at times. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agreed. And I think also the more you pray, the more God's going to grow that passion. Mm -hmm. Like if you're really truly praying because you want their salvation and not because you don't want to be the one to evangelize. <laughs> I feel like there are times when like, it's going to be impossible to not like I spent years praying for North Korea before writing a novel set in North Korea even came on my radar. Mm -hmm. Right. I wasn't praying for North Korea because I felt called to write a novel. And I was like, no God, I think I'll just pray for them. <laughs> so yeah, just again, know yourself, know your weaknesses, know your motivation. I know for me, sometimes 
I am afraid to add somebody to my prayers for the unsaved list because then I'm afraid God is going to be like, okay, now it's your turn. And so sometimes, yeah, sometimes the fear of action can be an excuse to not pray or, you know, I have a heart to pray for this, you know, country or people group in, you know, the jungles of South Africa. But I know that if I start praying for them, that there's a chance God might call me and my family to move there. So I'm not going to, I think we just need to go into this with a lot of discernment, know what our kind of personal and unique struggles are, where we fall on that spectrum of prayer and action. And then just remember that if you're going to err on one side, let's err on the side of, of praying too much. I would say, are you comfortable with saying that that's an okay default? Or maybe it does depend on the person. You know, I think that that's an okay default only because it's an okay default as long as you keep in mind that you need to be stretching yourself toward action. Yeah, let's say that. Let's say because that for sure. I feel like in certain cases, like praying for a huge decision, you're probably not going to regret praying more before taking action unless you miss an opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe it is just kind of personally dependent. You know, I think you and I, we obviously have a heart for prayer, which is why we're doing this show. So maybe I tend to. Yeah. I don't know. If you're worried about it, If you're worried that you're spending too much time praying and not doing, I would say, remember that prayer is the real work Mm -hmm. and that the more you pray, if God truly does have something that he wants you to be involved in, he's going to call that out into the world. Mm -hmm. Like my North Korea novel or like you and I being prayer partners and then eventually, you know, going into this podcast. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you're truly genuinely, your heart is for prayer, but you're worried that God's mad at you for not doing more just trust. The more you pray, the more he's going to show you what to be doing, or maybe you're exactly where he wants you to be. I agree. Yay. All righty. Um, well, let's call it a wrap. Unless we miss our just for fun. Do you want to share your favorite way to procrastinate? Oh yeah. Right now it's actually a bad habit and it's just, I will check my email. Mm -hmm. And then I get sucked in because I have a lot right now with all different kinds of teachers and with the podcast emails Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I will check my email to procrastinate and I've caught myself doing it and called myself out on it. But Mm -hmm. so I've actually, today is my first day of, I'm going to check my email twice, once in the morning. Wow. Night. Mm -hmm. Good for you. It's going to be hard. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is hard. You know me, I don't even love the word procrastination. Maybe that's why I changed it in our title. Oh yeah. Um, I forgot about that. I did too, until we talked about it just now. So let me tell you what I was going to say. And let me tell you now why I don't call it procrastination. I spend a lot of time, especially over the summer with my house plants. Like I have spent tons of time like them. reorganizing or repotting, or I've gotten into like taking cuttings now to make more it looks to somebody to somebody who knows that I'm like a work at home business owner. Yeah, maybe it looks to them like procrastination, but I know that I need quiet time, not in the like spiritual sense, but just I need quiet time. I need reflective time. It turns into prayer time, but that's not like I don't go into it saying like, all right, God, if you let me water my plants today, I'm going to spend that whole time in prayer. Like to me, it just like they go hand in hand. Um, So that is my, what do we want to call it? That is my way to productively rest. (laughs) And and that's the the word that I will use for that. Um, But actually, you know, maybe something that does turn more into like what we truly would look at as procrastination. I, over the weekends, I allow myself quite a a lot of um, Tetris, like smartphone Tetris. Oh yeah. That's my, uh, that's my guilty pleasure, but I'm doing better in terms of like just making it a weekend thing. And so I don't feel I don't feel bad about that. So my kids have this game called Geometry Dash. Uh And one of my kids got it on my phone. And the other day, I just tried it. Just they kind of were laughing about it. (laughs) It really is. It really is. That's so funny. It's very, it's, um, it's not like Tetris where you fit things into other things. Cause I Mm -hmm. love that game. That is Mm -hmm. just calming. It's the same thing though. You're like, 
you have this little little thing that hops over obstacles and then bounce, uh, and you've got to like time it just right to bounce over the <laughs> obstacles. It's mind numbing, but it's it really uh-huh. is kind of soothing. But it could become an addiction. So I yeah yeah yeah. There's a place for those know, things though. Yeah, and as long as you dash J. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you keep them in their place. So is this this uh this episode is sponsored by Tetris and no, I'm just and Geometry Dash and <laughs> your right. local your local nursery. That's right. That's right. All righty. Well, thank you guys for joining us. If you want to connect with us kind of throughout the week, if you're not getting enough of Alana and Jamie, please join um, the Praying Christian Women community on Facebook. This is where we have the Take Ten Tuesdays. This is where you can post prayer requests. There's a lot going on in there. So just hop on Facebook, look for the Praying Christian Women community. We would love to see you there. So without further... Procrastination. May he forgive all our selfishness and pride and free us from the sins that hold us in bondage. May our hearts rejoice in the forgiveness he has given and may we be quick to extend that same forgiveness to others. May we walk in humility knowing that our sins have separated us from God, but may we rejoice in the grace he has poured out on us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And our benediction is from Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. Amen.